Let's rank 30 random Egyptian gods based on the craziest looks, while uncovering some of their interesting stories. Nath, the war goddess and weaver of the world, was no ordinary deity. She was believed to be self-created and had no parentage. In an extraordinary show of gender defiance, she was sometimes referred to as father of gods and was depicted in androgynous or masculine dress. She's even said to have woven the world into existence and made the other deities. Talk about a cosmic power move. Dive into the drama with Nephthys, the goddess of morning, night, and rivers. Despite being married to the Chaos God set, she was nothing like him. In a divine soap opera twist, she tricked her brother Osiris into fathering her son Anubis because Set was infertile. Talk about family drama. Seishat, the goddess of writing, wisdom, and architecture, breaks all the norms. She's credited with inventing writing, granting the gift of hieroglyphs to humanity. But here's the intriguing part. Unlike other deities, she had no temples of her own and was the only female deity depicted with a seven-pointed emblem above her head, not a traditional crown. This mistress of the House of Books kept the records of all human achievements and was the divine chronicler. Shu, the god of air and light, had an extraordinary responsibility. He separated the earth and the sky, holding his daughter Nut, the sky, aloft with his arms. This wasn't just a casual feat. This physical act prevented chaos from reigning. But here's a mind-bending detail. In some myths, Shu, in his role of upholding the sky, was considered the stand-in for human beings, constantly striving to prevent the descent into chaos, a daily struggle that resonates with everyone. Mafdet, the goddess of justice and execution, had a morbidly fascinating role. Depicted as a feline, often a cheetah or a leopard, she protected against venomous bites but with a dark twist. She didn't just offer protection from snakes and scorpions, she was the executioner with inscriptions showing her with a rope or a snake around her neck, ready to deliver justice. She was the original Catwoman of Vengeance. Min, the god of fertility, sexuality, and lettuce, yes, lettuce, wasn't shy about showcasing his powers. He was often depicted in an explicit state of male fertility, holding his phallus erect with his left hand and a flail in his raised right hand. The most startling aspect, his sacred lettuce was believed to be an aphrodisiac, perhaps because the milky sap of this type of lettuce resembled semen. Serke, the scorpion goddess, is as complex as they come. Guardian against venomous bites, she protected the dead, specifically guarding the canopic jar that held the intestines after mummification. However, there's a sting in the tail. She could also send venomous creatures to kill and was often invoked to harm others in curses or magical spells. She exemplified the duality of being both protector and destroyer. Wajit, the cobra goddess, wasn't just any protective deity. She was the patron and protector of Lower Egypt, kings, and women in childbirth. But here's the clincher. Her symbol, the Eye of Horus, represents healing, protection, and royal authority. And wearing it was like having a personal bodyguard. It's said she would spit fire at attackers, which is how the famous pharaoh Tutankhamun had serpents adorning his crown. Isis wasn't just a domestic goddess, she was a top-tier magician. When her husband Osiris was murdered, she cunningly used her magical skills to resurrect him. And that's not all. She even managed to conceive their son Horus through the magic, while Osiris was dead. Talk about a divine plot twist. Maat, the goddess of truth, justice, and the cosmic order, was more concept than deity. She was the reason the sun rose, the stars stayed in the sky, and the seasons changed. Her influence was so immense, the pharaohs were sworn to uphold her principles. But here's the kicker. The ancient Egyptians believed that if her principles were violated, the world would return to chaos, literally ending civilization as they knew it. Did you know that the worship of Amun-Ra was so universal at one point that it nearly became a monotheistic faith? During the New Kingdom, the other gods were considered merely aspects of Amun-Ra. He was the hidden god, the mysterious creative force, so powerful that even the mighty pharaohs claimed to be his offspring to legitimize their rule. The eye-popping tale of Horus is something else. During a ferocious battle with his uncle set to avenge his father Osiris's death, he lost his eye. Later, the eye was restored and became the symbol of protection, royal power, and good health. But it's also where the all-seeing eye on the dollar bill comes from, a symbol that conspiracy theorists link to secret societies and celestial beings.
merging two deities into one, Paquette, whose name meant she who scratches, was a synthesis of Bastet and Sekhmet, embodying aspects of both gentle nurturing and ferocious destruction. Here's where it gets wild. Worshipped primarily in the area around Beni Hassan, there were no temples dedicated to her until an inadvertent discovery by miners who unearthed her speakeasy, a grotto and sanctuary. Satet, the archer goddess of the Nile's flooding, had a vital role that blended gentle nourishment and aggressive protection. She was responsible for the annual flooding of the Nile, which Egyptians depended on for farming. However, she was also a fierce guardian, her arrows fending off enemies. Here's the twist. Her name means she who shoots, arrows or floods, marking her as a deity who provides and destroys, reflecting the Nile's duality as both life giver and taker. If you thought the ancient Egyptian gods were all about order and justice, wait till you meet Sekhmet, the lioness goddess of war and healing. Yes, she brought diseases and disasters upon those who wronged the gods, but ironically she was also the deity who could avert plagues and cure diseases. Ancient Egyptians were so terrified of her wrath that they performed elaborate rituals and made offerings to pacify her and avoid epidemics. Sky goddess Nut has a creation story that's literally out of this world. She was believed to swallow the sun god Ra every evening, travel with him through her body at night, and give birth to him each morning. But there's more. Her body, depicted as the night sky, is shown in a position of perpetual arching over the earth, with her feet and hands touching the horizon, symbolizing her protective role over the earth and its inhabitants. Osiris's death and resurrection story is one of the earliest versions of a dying and rising god, and it's scandalous. His brother Set tricked and murdered him, only for Osiris to be brought back to life by his devoted wife Isis's magic. This divine drama was a seasonal symbol, but guess what? It also sparked contentious comparisons with later religious figures, including Christianity's Jesus. Hathor, the goddess of love, beauty, and motherhood, had a dark side that could send chills down your spine. During a fit of rage, she transformed into Sekhmet, the lioness goddess, and nearly annihilated humanity. The other gods tricked her with beer dyed red to look like blood, making her so drunk she reverted to her benign form. Imagine the fate of humanity hanging on a goddess's hangover. Anubis, the guardian of the underworld, was so crucial that the ancient Egyptians believed if he didn't approve of you, your afterlife would be a nightmare. Here's where it gets dark. If Anubis didn't weigh your heart correctly against the feather of truth, you'd be devoured by a terrifying beast, part crocodile, part lion, part hippopotamus. Now that's a divine judgment. Puda, the god of craftsmen and architects, was considered the creator of the universe in Memphis theology, not by command, but through his heart and speech. The real controversy? He was claimed to have conceived and given birth to the other gods through his thoughts and words, bypassing the need for a female deity. This theological concept caused quite a stir in the gender role conservative society of ancient Egypt. Now here's a deity that will both intrigue and terrify. Baby, the baboon god, known as the god of virility, among other things. But hold on, it gets wilder. He was also the god of the underworld, with a rather aggressive and sexual nature. Ancient Egyptians believed that souls had to get past him to enter the afterlife. He's often depicted in a very assertive sexual posture, and it was believed he could take women into the underworld at will, a truly primal deity. Geb, the god of the earth, had a tumultuous love life that could rival any modern soap opera. He was madly in love with his sister, the sky goddess Nut, but they were forcibly separated by their father, the air god Shu, on orders from the sun god Ra. Why? Ra was jealous and fearful of their offspring. The result, Geb's tears supposedly formed the dew seen on plants in the morning. Kanum, the ram-headed god, had a unique claim to fame. He fashioned humans on a potter's wheel from the mud of the Nile. This creator god didn't just shape people. He was believed to construct their ka, spiritual double, and endowed them with a part of his divine spark. But in a bizarre twist, despite his significant role, he was not one of the top tier gods and was worshiped only regionally. Meet ancient Egypt's own demon hunter, Bees. This dwarf god was a household protector, defending families against evil spirits and misfortune. But unlike other gods, he loved a good time. He was also the god of music, 
dance, and merriment. Images of him were even kept in bedrooms to safeguard against evil, particularly for pregnant women and children. He wasn't your conventional handsome deity, but he was a favorite among commoners. Khonsu, the god of the moon and time, was a game changer in ancient Egyptian mythology. He could influence people's fortunes and lifespans, and was even thought to have the ability to drive out evil spirits. But in one myth, Khonsu helped a pharaoh win a game against the moon to extend his life, essentially gaming the system of fate. Here's something for cat lovers. Bastet, the goddess of home, fertility, and childbirth, was depicted as a fierce lioness in her earlier representations, symbolizing her protective qualities. But in a twist, she evolved into a domestic cat symbolizing nurturing aspects. The real shocker? Her festivals were notorious for being the wildest parties in ancient Egypt. Imagine a celebration so loud and festive it could be heard from miles down the Nile. Sobek, the crocodile god of strength, power, and fertility, had a reputation that was a real double-edged sword. Worshippers believed he could both protect them from the dangers of the Nile, including actual crocodiles, and invoke fear as he himself was depicted as a crocodile. Here's the catch. In parts of Egypt, actual crocodiles were adorned with jewelry and worshipped as incarnations of Sobek. After their death, they were mummified in a grandiose ritual to honor the god himself. Brace yourself for the original god of wisdom writing and the moon. Thoth was considered so wise the gods appointed him as the arbitrator of divine disputes. But here's the real brain twister. He's credited with the invention of writing and the Egyptian calendar. And legend has it he even wrote a magical book containing all the secrets of the universe, which was hidden away and deemed too dangerous for mortals to read. Known as the god of chaos, deserts, storms, and war, Seth is one controversial figure. He murdered his brother Osiris and fought his nephew Horus, losing a testicle in the process. But get this, despite his negative reputation, he was essential to maintaining the balance of the cosmos. He even protected Ra during his nightly travels through the underworld, fighting off the monstrous snake Apep. Talk about a chaotic good. Get ready for the protector of a different kind. Towerit, the goddess of childbirth and fertility, wasn't the typical female deity. Depicted with the features of a pregnant hippopotamus with feline limbs and a crocodile back, she was a fierce protector of mothers and children. Despite her intimidating appearance, she was invoked for safe births, as it was believed her ferocity would deter evil forces, protecting mothers and infants alike.